Hi, thanks for coming back. I'm here with my Bali baby beauties, <laughs> Laura and Bella, both 20 years old, who grew up here in Bali, and they're telling us about how that affected their lives. Uh, okay, so you were telling me about the time you went off to boarding school, just to catch up if you weren't here before, and you did, did, you, and you did your last year. In I, Australia? My last two years. I didn't go to boarding school, though. I lived with my grandparents. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, what, of course, all the parents want to know is, with that as your experience growing up, and then, boom, you're out in the world, what are you doing now? What have you decided to do? What am I doing now? now? <laughs> yeah. Well, at the moment, I'm applying to um, universities in New York, and I'm hoping to study something in the visual arts. I'm not quite sure yet, but I definitely want my job to include travel and something visual, possibly designing, but I'm not sure. Just That's something something creative, definitely. Sure. sure. Do you think that that came out of um, your life here or just you as a unique individual? I think a bit of both. Yeah. I mean, we're surrounded by so many beautiful things here, the nature and the Balinese are really good handyman and handymen and, you know, they make beautiful wood carvings and batik sarongs and it's just, yeah, it's beautiful place yeah it does that it brings that out what do you think you're going to what what have you decided <laughs> to do with yourself Laura um, well I just finished my university degree last year and I majored in Asian studies oh. did a Bachelor of Arts um, How clever. How yeah clever. And I got my advanced Indonesian so um, at the moment I'm just kind of in limbo I really enjoyed my studies but I'm looking to go to Europe next year I've um, been offered an internship at a PR company in London and so I'm really hoping that I can get that on the grow and at the moment I'm just kind of spending time with family and enjoying being back here as well as kind of traveling around Indonesia and yeah just making the most of things while I've finished uni. Well now you said <laughs> something earlier today about you guys are really impressed with the things that all of your group have decided to do. Mm -hmm. Other kids in your group. Yeah mm -hmm. we have um, quite a few friends of ours that are at university in Australia that mm -hmm. are becoming marine scientists, fashion designers, they're doing property consultancy. Um, yeah, there's, we've got friends in America as well and in Canada, kind of all over the world, in Europe that are at uni and all kind of studying really hands-on, interesting degrees. I mean, a few of them are interested in the environment and environmental sustainability mm. and sort of ecotourism. Sure, so, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. do you, so would you say that um, growing up in Bali, pros, co uh, not pros and cons, obviously, um, was there anything about growing up in Bali that you felt was um, put you at a disadvantage when you went out there? Absolutely. Why? I moved to um, New York when I was seven years old, yeah. and I absolutely hated it. Why? I really hated it. Um, it took me about six months. I mean, now I love the place because here life in a way it can be too easy you know we have the mantus and we have nannies and helpers all the time we have drivers <laughs> <laughs> so okay, it, it's not um it's lovely living here but at the same time it's not reality so that y you know you and you're thrown into the western world and you're like wow you know even just simple things like having to go and do grocery shop oh, i yeah. wasn't used to it and yeah. i mean it sounds so silly but it's true and it's a real shock yeah. and that's the one thing. I can tell you I did it all my life, and it's a big, fat bore. Yeah. Believe me, you're not missing it. <laughs> That's what I think about shopping. Yeah. All right. What about you, Laura? What did you feel? Oh, I'm disadvantaged. I've um, been an island girl all my childhood. I guess it was just a real shock going to a, a school with about 1,200 kids or something. Sure. and After going small school. Yeah, experience. going, and yeah. everybody knew each other at school, and it was really comfortable going to school. I was friends with everybody, and, yeah, as we were saying it's before, really if you were kind of a little bit alternative or had something else going on, it was just kind of a shrug of the shoulders. That's who they were. But I guess going to a Western school, it was, you know, a bit of a shock having to, at boarding school as well, do my own washing and, you know, do the kind of everyday things, mundane things that you didn't really think that you had to do because we were living here and really pri privileged, but, yeah, having to do those kinds of things. True, but, you know, I do want to keep saying sometimes to my Indonesian friends that the truth is some of the Westerners that are moving here now, you, an Indonesian person, are probably about 90% more likely to have grown up with a Pimbantu in your house 
as well. You know, I have mm -hmm. friends in Karangasem, yeah. and they take a 12 or 13 year old girl from the local village who the parents may need the assistance, mm -hmm. and they give that girl a job yeah. during the her days of her holidays from school and stuff like that. So you're more likely to have a pimbanzi when you come from Karangasem than you are from Texas or yeah. something. <laughs> you know, so it's really quite interesting. It's pro and con, I yeah, think, as a way. Because you have to learn to be really kind yeah. and respectful of people. Yeah. Mm. Have somebody else in your home all of the time. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, they become part of your family. So, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it could be a con, but I think it's more of a pro. <laughs> so, the A number one question I'm curious about, because I have kids growing up in Bali. So, do you think that you will, after you do your education and find your career, do you see yourself coming back to have your life here in Bali? Oh, it will definitely always be part of my life. Um, I can't really stay in one place for too long. After three or four months, I like to get out and move around a bit. But, I mean, it's my home, you know, and it, it's an amazing place. And I always feel comfortable here when I land here in the airport. You know, I know that I've come back home. It's really great. That's reassuring mm. for me, yes. Yeah. And Laura, you think yeah. this will be home? Yeah, I mean... Well, I mean, with Asian studies, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can't go too far, really, no, for long. yeah, it's great to think that Bali will be my home, and I really hope it is. But at the same time as well, from growing up here till now, there's been a lot of change and development here. And I think sometimes the development is actually for the worse. And so there has the been a, a lot of, you know, negative development and a lot of money making here that is a lot of taking and not that much giving back and I just hope that kind of Bali starts to steer itself into a more positive direction and there are people that are taking the initiative to do so like foundations like GUS and stuff and that's right yeah and it's you know the traffic and the pollution can sometimes be a bit overwhelming because we you're, we weren't really used to that growing up here and okay. all of a sudden you're stuck in traffic the change is crazy it's drastic in the past 10 years mm. and I think, um, you know, the, the Indonesian community and the Balinese aren't really educated, you know, it's not really where the people, what they're used to, where they came from, so they have to be educated and they have to know the aftermath and what will happen and they, you know, about recycling and I think it's really important. Well, you're touching on my mission now, my personal life mission mm -hmm. and the mission of this show, which is I think more than any other time in the past, we have an opportunity where really we need to help each other. Mm -hmm. People who know about facing the issues that have been in the West for 20 and 25 years have some solutions to offer. Mm -hmm. And the, what we've been lacking in the West in terms of spiritual awareness and how to really live your life at one with other people, at one with the planet, and at one with God, like Trahita Karana, we need to learn from the Balinese. Mm -hmm. So it's what I see, here. that's right. So I hope that you both find your way back here to live and help with this next phase, which is going to be very important. If we're going to maintain Bali as it is and what's great about it, we need to work together. So that's one of the reasons that we're doing this show. So you help? Yeah. You come and help? Yeah. Well, Ms. I mean, we've Asian already had study. a few um, group <laughs> meetings. Yeah. Oh, good. Where yeah. Yeah. What group? Um, well, no, just a bunch of us kids have gotten together oh, yeah. and Lara yeah, and Nathan yeah. actually arranged it yeah. and we touched on all the subjects of traffic, mm -hmm. pollution. And just, yeah, the, yeah. you know, plastic bags, what you can do about them. Also, waste management control. You know, there's a plant up in Tomesi and Guiana yeah. that's doing great that Gus has set up, but we don't have anything in this kind of area. And just general discussion of what us as the youth and the gener next generation of Bali people could do to help the community and also maybe even the rest of Indonesia, who knows? Absolutely. But, I mean, Absolutely. Bali holds a special place in our hearts, so I mean, I don't think any of us will want it to get to a point where there's nothing we can do because we'll give it a go. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I'm encouraged. You must keep us informed. We have a website. It's www.balitodayshow.com. We have a website. And please, girls, anything that you know that's going on, mm -hmm. that we can all help because that's the point. We have to all help, right? Yeah, of course. So let's use the website as well as I know GUS, which there's information on our website about GUS. Yeah. But, yeah, let's keep going. That's it. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Really, really. Thank I think you, anyone Nancy. No worries, darling. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm encouraged about the future. I think that with people like you, we're going to actually do better. <laughs> you know? So thanks very much. Okay, we're going to let you go. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes after this break. So come back. Wow.
I'm really happy to know that that's going on. Thank you.